So what is CTR manipulation and does it actually work? CTR, so click-through rate manipulation, is where basically you drive traffic to search your keywords on Google and then click on your results. And you can take it a step further and have them click on a competitor's result, immediately hit the back button, and then click on your result and spend a lot more time. So that signals to Google that your website is much better, your page quality is better, and therefore you should go higher up. And loads of people agree this does actually still work. It's one of those shady black hat tactics where, frankly, Google can't really do anything about it, but you've got to be smart about it. You've got to set up your tools in the right way. So first of all, I don't want to, be, I don't want to just shill tools everywhere, uh, but CTR Booster is the one I see consistently recommended. Uh, I find it hilarious with some of these black hat tools industry recommended. They always have these terrible landing pages that look like they were made 10 years ago. But CTR Booster is well-maintained. Uh, it's constantly being updated. It does break regularly, um, but it always gets fixed. So I know it doesn't look great. It looks really scammy, um, but I use it a lot just because, again, it's not got a it's got a high cost to set up, but the actual recurring fee is pretty low. So I don't think there's anything wrong with sending a bit of traffic to a site just to be sure. Uh, first of all, we've got brand name traffic, and recent Google updates have shown that if you have existing brand name traffic then that can give you a big advantage because Google can see you're a real business. So once you start putting content on your website and building some links, that all responds much quicker than it would if you didn't have brand name traffic. So when you're first starting out, I do generally recommend just send a few clicks to your site searching for your brand name because Google can't really penalize you if 50 people a day start searching your brand name. Maybe you've done a YouTube video or a press release, you've been in the news, something like that. It happens all the time. Here's a case study from one of my clients who started with me exactly a year ago, actually, in October. So we've done for them content, keyword research, and link building. So we've got them up to a domain rating of 28. That's very respectable. Um, but also, their traffic has really taken off. So now up to more than 10,000 visitors per month, and that's going from literally zero this time last year. And one of the main differentiating factors with this client, rather than a lot of other clients I work with, is they already had a good brand. They're already about 200 searches a month for their brand name. So as soon as they built this presence, Google knew this is real. This is a business we should be promoting. So in my case, starting an affiliate site from the ground up, that can be quite a grind to actually get that initial trust. So if you've got brand name traffic, then that can help. And CTR Booster is actually a great, great way to achieve that. So the way CTR Booster works is you use proxies. So basically other IP addresses. And you want that IP address to change every half hour or so. So CTR Booster, Turbo Proxy, they actually include their own. And these are 4G mobile proxies, which change IP address every 30 minutes. So you don't want to go too hard with CTR Booster. The whole point is you just want a small trickle of traffic, because in the grand scheme of things, if you increase your click-through rate maybe 10% and your competitors aren't doing this, then that's going to be a big win. So you don't want to go overboard, uh, but just a gentle nudge can really help. So realistically, you're only talking a small number of clicks per day. So if you spread it throughout the day and you change your IP address all the time, changing your location all the time, then there's no footprint there. Google's really going to struggle to actually punish you for that. If you want to be a bit more aggressive, you can use keywords. So if you're doing anything like Parasite, then I'd recommend being quite aggressive with the Parasite. And that's the case study I'm going to show you here. So how do you get started? You actually need a virtual private server, which I connect to with remote desktop. I use Contabo, just a cheap, cheap one. There's some good VPS providers in the description below. If I haven't done it yet, remind me and I'll add those in. And so we connect to remote desktop. And now this is CTR Booster. And you're actually going to see it working away in the background. It's going to come up with a window now and then when it kicks in. And this just works in the background on my virtual private server, which means if I close my laptop or I'm doing something else, it just carries on working. So I recently ranked number one for Rhinoplasty North Korea as part of a competition. And I did it by accident. I wasn't really intending to compete in this competition. But um, I got bored and thought, eh, maybe I'll give it a little go. And I did the bare minimum. I did a Money Robot Blast. See my video on how that works on Money Robot. And then CTR manipulation. But because this is a LinkedIn page, I could be aggressive with the CTR manipulation. Because LinkedIn is a high traffic site. Google's not going to take it down. And now, I gave a talk on this case study about a week ago in Bangkok. And just to make sure, I thought it would be really embarrassing if I'm no longer number one for that keyword. So I did my slides the night before, checked again that morning just before I went on stage, and actually I was still number one, so all good. It was basically the day after 
I noticed I then dropped down to number two. And you've got to test this over multiple different browsers, things like that. It's very difficult to get accurate rank tracking like that. But I also had a notification from CTR Booster that once again, it had broken. So there seemed to be a correlation there where as soon as my CTR manipulation stopped, I dropped down again. And this article, which actually is a bit older, overtook me. So there's no such thing as a single variable experiment in SEO because you're always competing with Google, which is this big, ever-changing machine. There's all these unknowns you can't possibly control. So it's very difficult to do any true testing. But just at a basic level, the best kind I can do, certainly, that I saw there was a correlation there. CTR booster stopped working, my ranking dropped. I set it up again once it was fixed. And then three days later, I'm back at number one. So I think there's uh, definitely some measurable proof there. For my actual settings, I've had to hide most of my projects here, but you can see there's daily visits here where I'm sending, depending on the, the exact use case, anywhere between three and a couple of hundred visits per day. And then we have the total number of successful visits on the side here. And now here's how you actually set it up. So you click as project, and there's a range of different tools you can use within CTR Booster, depending on what platform you're using. So I normally use the Google Ranker, and I just put in the, right, the keyword rhinoplasty North Korea, put in the LinkedIn page as my target. And this is actually CTR Booster running in the background while I'm trying to give you this demonstration. That's why you want it running on a VPS. And I set a maximum daily visits of 50. So it will pick a random number between 10 and 50. You can set the duration of the visit. You can choose whether you visit a competitor first or not, whether it's mobile, desktop, or mixed. And you can configure all these things like the delay between actions so that if you are using it a lot, you're still waiting 30 minutes for it. That way you don't have the same IP address constantly hitting the same project. So you want to spread it out so that with that IP address changing every 30 minutes, uh, each IP address only gets used once per project. So that's basically it. You do need to set it up correctly. Some clients do request if I will actually use it on their site. And using my expertise, given that I've figured out a, a balance that seems to work really well without causing any risk or uh, failing to have results, I like to think I've worked out uh, a good strategy there. Uh, can you do it on, by yourself? Absolutely. But depending on your use case, it's quite difficult to tell just how hard you should push a particular page. Um, but yeah, existing clients, sometimes they do actually want me to use these kinds of slightly more gray hat tactics just to help them out a bit, test it out on their website. And generally the results are pretty good, but it's important that thing is not about transforming your traffic overnight. You want to run a small number of clicks, just a gentle nudge to increase your CTR over several months, basically, because you want that long-term trend rather than the sudden spike and don't do the obvious thing, which is uh, drive a lot of traffic in a short time. It doesn't do anything. You say that doesn't work. Stop doing it. So Google's can see you've had this massive spike of traffic that then died off, maybe using some sort of artificial manipulation tactics. So be sensible, be safe, don't abuse it. Um, but I'm generally a big fan of CTR manipulation. I think it's really useful. One of those just extra little things you can add in to your overall process on top of the fundamentals, which are content and links. So make sure you're mastering content and links first. But then for that extra 10%, maybe look into some CTR manipulation.